Hello, how are you? Hope you've had a great week. Welcome to the fifth episode, episode five of the Follow Jesus Discipleship Teachings or Series. How have you been? Hope your week has been good. Hope you listened and enjoyed the last episode where we were talking about patience, the virtue called patience. And hope you've been able to learn something from it and understand that, you know, God's perfect timing, you know, is the best thing you want to have. You don't have to first things to happen. God has a great plan for you and he wants you to do much more than you think you can. And he just wants you to be patient and he knows the right time for you to be revealed. You know, I think I'll just say a few things about the last episode. You know, one of the things, you know, that can, the most dangerous things or one of the dangerous things that can happen to a believer with, you know, with giftings and with, with the hand of God on their life is to be revealed before their time, you know, where you think you have something going on and so you just want the world to see it. And meanwhile, you should, you should still be in the incubation, you know, incubation period, but you just decide you want to reveal yourself. I have seen that kill many people before their time. They just go out and, you know, believe they have what it takes. And before you know it, in a little while, in a short while, you don't hear about them anymore. They just fizzle out and some people actually lose their lives in the process. So I I will beg, you know, the young minister, you know, pastor, worship leader um, to just learn to walk with God's timing. You know, if the Lord has called us, he is able to create unimaginable platforms for us that will be tired. You know, you would, you won't even be able to meet all, you know, so I, I want to beg you, please listen to that episode, listen to that episode and um, let the Lord help you to have patience, to just trust him, you know, to give you what is best for you. And he is a good father. He won't give you anything short or less of what you should I use the word deserve? Yes, he won't give you anything short of that. So trust him. Don't run ahead of your time. Don't want to be revealed before your time. Don't destroy your purpose before you even start. You know, don't walk with someone else's time and, and believe because they are going, you know, on different platforms. I should also go on different platforms. It doesn't work like that. There are people that you would never see on any platforms and they would have done what the Lord asked them to do and they will get rewards in heaven here on earth and in heaven there are people you'll be surprised in and that's why the bible says there will be surprises in heaven there are people you'll be surprised to see that they've done so much and you never heard anything about them i'm not saying it's a bad thing for you to be known or for you to be seen or for you to be heard i'm just saying be satisfied with what whatever god gives to you be satisfied with however god has called you you know to be if he wants you revealed he will do it and if he wants you hidden be fine with that sometimes it's hidden for a while and sometimes it might be hidden nobody sees but god sees you know where man can see god sees so please listen and watch that episode and please let your questions you know keep coming so as much as possible by the grace of the lord we will answer those questions by his help. Um, what, what I want to talk about today is, you know, one of those, we like called touchy topics, I, I don't know, but it's one of those topics that we, with the things I've seen, I believe that should be talked about. Um, we're talking about the, the right attitude to power you know, the right attitude to power. How, what kind of disposition do we have to power? What kind of, um, how do we handle the power or the authority or the privileges given to us? How do we handle them? How do we 
dispense them you know do you just um do we dispense them with love care and you know compassion or do we just dispense them with um pride where we just feel we have it and we are on top of the world and nobody can stop us nobody can do anything to us how do we handle power and how do we dispense power as a believer i wrote here i said as a believer the power you and i have as believers does not originate from us so it is important to use it with humility the power you and i have does not originate from you or from me so if i understand that that the power as a believer you know that the power i'm walking with i didn't create it i didn't originate it then i will handle it with humility i will handle the power and the grace and the authority given to me with humility i will be careful how i handle it and how i dispense it so let's get that very clear and if you want to argue that it's okay but i believe strongly that the power you and i as believers use does not originate from us for that which is so obvious is not your name is not my name that we use when we pray there's a name we use and that name is jesus so that is so clear you know it's not in the name of victoria or in the name of joy or in the name of francis or in the name of orenze it's in the name of jesus so that makes it very clear that we walk with the power of jesus as believers as pastors worship leaders ministers you know whatever capacity that we hold some level of power or some amount of power it is not our power it is jesus's power and because it's his power we have to handle it with humility we have to be careful how we handle it You know I also wrote here that the way we dispense the power at our disposal speaks volumes. The way you dispense that's the way you give, you know we are conduits, we are vessels, so things go through us. God works through us. And the way we dispense or give or express that power volumes it speaks a lot to the power we carry and the power we are functioning with so don't forget that you are not the originator of the power we use as believers i'm not the originator and so because of that the way we dispense that power is extremely important and it speaks volume volumes of who we are I also wrote here that if we're not in awe of the power of God when at work in us if you and I are not in awe of the power of God when at work in us then that power should be questioned if you and i are not in awe in reverence of the power of god when it's at work in us we should question 
the power we are functioning with. Because sometimes when you see how we handle the gifts that the Lord has given to us, you know, you will <laughs> agree with me. I mean, I'm thinking about this so much because I'm cringing at, at some things I've seen. It's, it doesn't make sense. But if we really, really understand that the power is not ours, then we'll be at or in awe of that power when he's walking through us. The gift of prophecy is not mine. I don't just know things because I want to know them. The Holy Spirit reveals them to me. So when I meet a total stranger I know nothing about, I've never met before, and the Holy Spirit starts to download that person's life to me. If I truly understand and I'm using the right medium of power, I should be in awe. I mean, that's amazing. It's mind-blowing to know about somebody to, you know, like some really deep things that if they didn't say it to me, I wouldn't know. But then the Holy Spirit reveals it and I'm telling them, not just, not just for them to be, to be in awe and be like, oh, wow. The person, the conduit, the vessel, myself, that this gifting is walking through should be amazed and not feel uh, entitled. I think that's how it is sometimes. People just feel, so I know this about you. I know that about you. And the disposition you see is so full of pride, full of self. Where it's just like they are the ones seeing it. Like they don't attribute the glory to the one who is making it happen. They just act like, yeah, I know all things. I'm God. No, we are not. We are not. We see by the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about those who see with other means. But we as believers, we see by the help of the Holy Spirit. We know by the help of the Holy Spirit. So it's not our, it's not us. And so how we handle it is very important. If you are revealing some deep secret about someone, and even you are not in know, we should question the power you're working with. Because if it's of God, it is new to you. Yes, you and I have access to it. But it is always amazing. It should always be amazing to us because it's, I didn't know you. I, I knew nothing about you. And the Lord is downloading it. I can see things. That is not man's work. And man should not take glory for that. Man should humble himself. And let God take the glory. When you're walking or functioning with a power you got by yourself. And you don't see it as a gift given to you. When you're functioning or walking with a power you got by yourself. Either from one Baba somewhere. Or from one, you know, priestess somewhere. You act like it is your power. Because really, it's yours. You got it by yourself. The Lord didn't give it to you. You got it by yourself. So when you see people, you know, do all manner of things that is not Christ. How was Jesus? What do you read about him? How did he, did he handle power? Was he proud with it? Or was it compassionate and loving with it? 
I mean, that's the Jesus we use his name on. As believers, we use his name. And yet, he was humble. He is humble. With the amount of power that he has. He didn't use it like, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. He just didn't use it carelessly. He was very compassionate in his dispensing of power. So don't come and, you know, when some people, for, for someone to come to you and get a revelation, they start to, you know, crawl from the street before your, your altar. Because they are coming to a God. And they start to crawl and, you know, and sometimes I've seen people God help us. I've seen people who cross their leg and just feel cool. And that's why someone will say, oh, he has not seen for 15 years. He just saw and the people, so you were blind, yes. And you can see, yes. Really? Really? If you met someone Let's not even come from the person who is blind. If you, as a pastor, me as a pastor, as a minister, as a worship leader, met someone who is blind, confirmed blind, not, not fake. If I meet that person and I say a word of prayer, and their eyes become open. Trust me. I, I, I would run wild. Because that's amazing. And there is a right expression that amazing gets from us. Or should get from us. It's amazing. It's not my power. It's not my doing. It is his doing. It should amaze me. It should overwhelm me and the person who the miracle is being, you know, achieved in their lives. So as a young pastor, young worship leader, be careful don't just be moved by power. People use all manner of power. Different power from different sources. Be careful and don't let pride make you desire power so much that you go get it from the wrong source. And for every time Jesus does a miracle through you, you should be in awe if truly Jesus did it. Recently, I was talking to someone on the phone and I was told to pray for the person and I just did. I prayed and that was it. I finished praying for this person on the phone, went back. I was actually in the studio, um, probably working on a song, producing. And the person said, pray my man. I said, but you've prayed for the person already. It's fine. We said, pray. So I prayed and that was it. And as soon as I dropped, the phone I started to feel pain in my leg and I it was very um, quick that I could I know just some few minutes ago I didn't have any pain so what's this pain where's this coming from and immediately the Holy Spirit because things that was happening I didn't know what it was if you want me to lie to you, I'll tell you, when that pain started, I started to know, yes, something is happening in the realm. I did not know. I was like, what's this pain? And I said, Holy Spirit, what's going on? 
Why am I having this pain? And then he said, that person you spoke to, ask if they have a pain in their leg. And I'm like, now, me personally, I'm always very careful. Even when I hear, I'm still careful because I'm, I'm, I don't want to say what is not. So I asked the person I spoke, I mean, the person who gave me the phone, I asked, that person I spoke to, do they have pain in the election? No, no, they don't. I said, okay, I don't know why I, you know, I feel a pain and I asked the Holy Spirit and he said to ask. I said, well, well, as much as I know, they don't. But you know what? Let me ask. So this person who was with me called back that person. And when he called back the person, asked the question, do you have, are you feeling pain? And the person said, yes. Yes, I am. It's been disturbing me for like three months and I didn't know what to do. And, you know, I've been worried, but I didn't even know who to talk to or what to say. And the person was like, oh, then she gave me back the phone and I said, wow, well, the Holy Spirit, Jesus wants to heal you because in my wildest dream, there is no way I would know that. Or I would have known. And I said, Jesus wants to heal you. So let me just pray for you. And I prayed that Jesus, you revealed this. I didn't know. And I believe you did because you wanted to heal. We thank you for revealing and we thank you because he's healed. And in Jesus name. And that was it. Let me tell you. I mean, not just that day. This maybe two weeks ago or so every day I think about it and I'm like wow I could have said that oh that person do they have um are they deaf in their right ear or their left ear and then they will call the person and say no they are not and the person will say they are not I could have gotten it wrong because I didn't know and a lot of the times we don't know the Holy Spirit reveals these things to us so if we assume that position where we don't know, we are just conduits, he reveals it. So we, he should keep us humble and we should be in awe. And I've been in that place just like, and these, these are just, he does so many things that you just feel, I didn't know this. I have, I'll go back to my corner where I just think, sometimes I'm with people talking, I'm thinking about it, wow. This God is just amazing. How come, you know, you know, just knowing the right thing is amazing. It's not, it's not by man's power. God is the one that does it. And we should be humble. We should dispense it with compassion with love we should be in awe of the hand of God upon our life or at work in our life of the giftings of God we should be in awe we should not feel yes because we are heir we are meant to you know do these things anyways yes but when the Lord does it through you knowing that you are man and he is God and he decides to walk through you it should humble us it should make us be in awe of who he is and he should help us love him and reverence him even more i'll just read some scripture about i'll be rounding this up i'll just read some scripture about um humility and and pride and I read James 4, James 4, 6. He says, but he gives more grace to the humble. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Luke 14, 11 says, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. 
if you feel so highly of yourself when the Lord does something with you and you feel you are the one doing it and you start to exhibit the disposition of pride, the Lord will humble you. And sometimes when he starts, it's almost unbearable. But if we humble ourselves and believe that it, he is the one walking through us, we are not doing this of our own accord. Is his name at work? Is his blood at work? He will exalt us. Bible says in Proverbs 24, 22, 4, it says the reward for humility and, and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. That's the reward for humility and fear of the Lord. Remember the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you are wise, you will reverence and be in awe of the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Humble yourself so that at the right time, this scripture is so very apt for our last episode. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and when it's time, when the time is right, he will exalt you. And when you go through that process, you will know that it's not you at work. It is him at work. And you will handle his things with care, with reverence, with holy fear. And I'll read the last one, Romans 12, 13. It says, for by grace given to me, I say to everyone, everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. We shouldn't think so highly of ourselves as believers. The power at work in us does not originate from us. We are just conduit and vessels dispensing that power. The power flows through us and we dispense it. And how we use it is very, very important. How we dispense the power of God speaks volumes. And another point I want you to keep, which I said earlier, if we are not in awe of the power of God, when at work in us or through us, then that power that we are using should be questioned. If we're not in awe of that power in us, we should question that power because if it's the power of God at work in us and we see the mighty hand of God, it should humble us and also make us be in awe of that power. And so we will dispense that power with love, with compassion, with humility. And then God can trust us with more. And don't let anybody fool you. Don't think that the best thing you can do is display power. And so you are not willing to stay under the mighty hand of God for him to decide when you will display power and you, for the thirst and the hunger of power, you go and look for power from other sources. So trust the Lord. Humble yourself. Realize that you are not the originator of the power. And let the power walk through you. And be quick to give glory back to him. I 
I will end this episode today and by God's grace we will talk again next week God bless you and I love you <laughs>